Hey guys, so I'm about to show you a couple of videos of me working with a fear reactive dog, but before I showed you guys those videos, I wanted to talk about a couple really important things. Um, first, a little bit more background on the dog itself and the behavior that we're trying to work on. Two, um, some important things to remember when you're working on behavior modification and three, how I'm going to go about that process, okay? So the first thing is that Luna is a 10-month-old Labrador Retriever, um, and she started becoming very, very fear reactive towards dogs, specifically after she had a couple of really bad incidents with um, a slightly older adult dog named Maggie. Um, they just probably aren't very compatible playmates, um, and that you know, it just kind of created more problems. If I had to guess, based off of the level of fear that Luna is presenting, uh, it probably happened during one of her fear periods, which is why it is coming on so strongly now. Um, in addition to the incidents with Maggie, there was a few other attempts um, to like kind of work her and get her re-socialized around dogs, but um, the situation might not have been controlled 100% the best way um, which just kind of resulted in some more incidents of it um, which only like intensified her fear and also showed her that reacting in the way that she does is going to get her what she wants which is away from the other dogs because she's afraid of them so um, what I'm going to be doing with her is I'm trying to teach her that it's okay to be afraid of dogs. Um, obviously, we cannot completely take somebody's fear away, but what we can do is we can rebuild their confidence so that their fear is not paralyzing to them and all-consuming in their thoughts, and we can also help reprogram them to have a better reaction to that fear, okay? So when I say a better reaction to that fear, um, I would like to kind of talk about the escalation of like behaviors that you want to see a dog go through if they're in a situation where they're uncomfortable, okay? So the first thing that we would want to see our dog do, obviously, is try to get away from the situation, okay? Um, if your dog is trying to flee a situation, that means like they're like, hey, white flag, I don't want any of this, let me out of this. That's when it's your job as the owner, as the handler, to step in um, and, you know, give your dog an out. Don't ever let your dog just feel like they don't have an out or that they're not safe um, or that retreating is not an option, okay? Um, even if they're on leash, if your dog is extremely fearful of something, you forcing them into a situation is not going to help, okay? It's not going to help build their confidence, um, so don't do it. Let them retreat a little bit and then reward them when they want to come back out, okay? Um, tell them good job for being brave, whatever. We are encouraging that brave behavior, but we don't want our let we don't want to let our dogs think that we're not acknowledging the fear that they have, okay? So, first step, we would want them to try to flee. Um, second thing, like if they did try to flee and they're being pursued, the next thing would be like raising their hackles, maybe baring their teeth a little bit. Um, I'm okay with this. Um, a lot of people get really weird when their dog starts raising their hackles or showing their teeth um, because they think it's a really aggressive thing. But remember, dogs can't communicate with us the same way that we do with other people. So we can't just tell somebody like, hey, you're scaring me, please stop chasing me. They're doing that through physical body language. Unfortunately, a lot of this gets misconstrued as like aggression and the dog wanting to start a fight when that's simply not the case. Um, however, by other young dogs who have not been taught proper communication, um, this could be seen as a sign of aggression, which could lead to them getting attacked, um, which honestly I think probably was kind of what happened with Maggie and Luna. Because uh, Maggie isn't too much older than Luna, so odds are she didn't have the proper skills necessary to do it, and then she just ended up attacking her when she didn't like something. So. After they bare their teeth a little bit and they raise their hair, the next thing that we would probably see is like a bark, like a warning bark, like, hey, don't get any closer to me, like, I'm afraid of you, I'm going to bite you if you keep pursuing me, and then obviously the bite. So um, another thing that I want to talk about right now is the difference between a dog snapping once and a dog continuing to pursue an attack, okay? 
So a lot of people get upset even with like the little snap corrections and stuff like that. You cannot be upset with a dog for this. Um, a little snap or a small mild correction and a little nip, that again, that is how dogs communicate with one another. If you watch dogs play, um, they're rough with each other. They're pulling on each other with their teeth. They're dragging them around. They're like pinching them. They're doing all sorts of stuff. They are not hurting each other with their teeth, right? So if they're just giving a little warning snap like that um, and it's quick and then they're done, that's an acceptable behavior, okay? When it becomes unacceptable is if your dog issues that correction, the other dog backs off and then they continue to advance. That's how you know you have a real problem on your hand because in their mind, even escalating up to a snap is not working anymore and they need to continue pursuing them. So um, how are we going to change this? We're going to do this a couple of ways. First of all, like I said, we're going to build their confidence. We're going to rebuild that relationship um, between being able to be in the presence of a dog without being completely struck in with fear. Okay. If we can keep them from even just being in the presence of dogs without being completely stricken with fear, that will make our job a lot easier. Um, that's where you're going to see me doing a lot of exercises like through the fence and just staying on both sides, treating them back and forth, just having them calm down and relax and be okay with just being in each other's presence. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a lot of like reactive dog stuff and I'm going to try to reprogram her that if she sees something that she's uncomfortable with instead of barking or getting reactive, redirect back to me. Let me know what's going on and I'll work you through it, okay? When in doubt, when you're working with a fear reactive dog, your relationship and their trust in you is going to be more important than anything else. Because when in doubt, if I can get that dog to redirect back to me instead of just immediately losing their head, I can get them out of that situation that they're uncomfortable with without them ever even having to react. Um, then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to try to pre reprogram her to think that a normal escalation of warning will get her what she wants. Um, like I said, she is skipping a lot of steps right now. Um, she's not fleeing. She's not She is baring her teeth and her hackles, but that's happening briefly and then it goes into a full scale attack. So she, um, for example, well, not even for example, that was the first training session that we had that I wanted to tell you guys about. Um, so before I say this, I want to address a really common misconception that I believe people make with fear reactivity, okay? A lot of people think that you cannot correct that behavior at all or otherwise it's going to make them more fear reactive. I say that's not true, okay? To an extent, yes, that is definitely true. Um, however, it depends on how you do it. Um, therefore, I'm going to tell you guys about the first introduction that we had yesterday um, so that you can kind of understand how I got her to the point that she's at today which the video is going to show okay um unfortunately i wasn't able to record that lesson i was kind of surprised that all the dogs were out when i got home so it kind of threw a, like a wrench in my plans um so we ended up just work doing some leash work with the dogs through the fence first um with my two boys we did um just interaction between the fence whatever and then once I saw that she was pretty calmed down and she really wasn't, she had a nice relaxed body language, um, she was redirecting to me really easily, she was um, not showing any teeth, she wasn't snarling, anything like that. So I decided to do the first introduction with Hershey. And when I brought him out at first, everything was okay. She was sniffing and then he kind of started going to try to sniff her back end, which I knew about. Um, but this is a quick little side note, and this is something that I wish somebody would have told me really early on in my training career that nobody did, um, and it has been a game changer for me, okay? So one thing about behavior modification that in my opinion, a lot of trainers do wrong 
is they try to avoid ever putting your dog in a situation that would trigger that behavior, right? That's what they base their most of their training around. It's strictly about management. It's not about actually fixing that behavior. Now, I understand that to a certain extent, but the problem is as a dog owner, how can you guarantee that no matter what, another dog is not gonna approach you while you have your dog on a leash? You can't. Whether it be like, on whether that dog is on a leash itself, whether it got loose, whether it's, you know, you're trying to take your dog somewhere and like, who knows, right? You're trying to test the possibilities, but it's nearly impossible. So, like I said, there is a certain level of escalation that I'm going to allow. Um, if a dog has already tried everything else, like they've already tried um, escaping, they've already tried like a teeth snarl, they've already tried like their hackles, a little bit of a growl, and the dog is still pursuing them, and they snap at that dog and then that's it, that's okay. Um, but like I said, once they get to that full on attack, I am never going to allow that at all period. Um, and the reason why is because once a dog figures out that that works, they will default to it. So when I was doing the introduction with Luna and Hershey, um, I was kind of trying to test her. I kind of wanted to see exactly where her level of fear was at. I wanted to see how intense it was. Um, I also wanted to see the intensity of her reaction um, because that was going to determine a lot on how I based my own training. So when she initially snapped at Hershey, Hershey stopped and he backed off, which is exactly what you would want to see in that situation. But what I would have liked to see from her was instead of staying curled in a ball with her hackles up, still growling with her teeth bared, I would have liked to see her retreat in that moment, right? So she snapped at him, he backs off. I would like to see her retreat, put some space between her and another dog. That's not what happened. Um, she snapped, he backed off. She waited for her opportunity and she lunged and started trying to attack him. The second that she lunged at him, the second time after he wasn't doing anything else, I snatched her up and I pulled her away. Um, I told her, no ma'am, we're not gonna do that anymore. And I put her back down. Um, so literally, and then after I put her back down, I just made her keep walking by them and walking by them and walking by them and walking by them. And I made her keep doing it until she relaxed. Um, and obviously I'm doing this with a lot of reward. I'm giving her a lot of treats, but I'm forcing her at that point to see that these dogs are not going to hurt her. And that even if she attacks him, she's still going to have to be around other dogs. So it's going to be a lot more in her best interest to just be nice. Um, that happened last night. Um, after that happened, we did do some more work through the fence. Um, and like a little bit later in the night. And then this morning was when all of these videos happen. Um, and I can honestly say she was a completely she had a completely different mindset today okay um but when you're watching the videos i want you to notice how like i don't um i don't ever really raise my voice with her i never get upset with her it's always very encouraging even a little tiny steps away i'm gonna encourage her oh good girl so brave so brave um and i'm encouraging for all of the good interactions right now um not just the ones that i think are the best um, another thing that I'm doing is if I see her start to get uncomfortable even a little bit, I'm going to encourage her to move away from the situation and get moving. I'm not just going to leave her stagnant in that one spot where she feels like they continue to press in and in and in. I'm going to teach her how to reposition herself to get herself out of that situation instead of allowing it to happen and then snapping. Um, you'll see um, her redirection today was really, really beautiful. Um, she, you know, would look at the other dog and then look at me like, Miss Jordan, what do you want me to do? Um, there was a, a couple times where when she was still on the leash, her, she got a little too close to her. It made her uncomfortable, um, but she didn't bury her teeth. She didn't snap. Instead, she came on the other side of me and let me mediate that interaction. 
Um, that's another thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about briefly before you watch this video. Um, you have to remember that when you're handling a dog and you're working with a dog, you, they're looking to you for guidance in everything. No matter what they're doing, like they want you to be a part of it and they want your guidance. Even though they might act like they don't sometimes, like they do. They want you involved, especially if it's something that they're fearful of. So you'll see it in the videos how much she's redirecting to me and how much she's looking to me for guidance and support. Um, and the more I give it to her, the more she blossoms. So that was just a couple things I wanted to talk to you guys about before you watch the video. Um, and that way you'll kind of have a better idea of like what I'm doing and how I'm approaching it and everything like that. But hope you enjoy.